Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents. Something shouldn't have gone wrong. Oh, well, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, we have some things we need to talk about. I'm going to have to reinstall my office. That's what I'm working on now, and that's what this is about. And it's letting me know something went wrong, and I'll have to take care of that later. Because, you know, that's what happens when something goes wrong. Aw, he had a problem. Of course there's face. Aw. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, the biggest and greatest Ponzi scheme of all time. Of all time. They told you in 2000 and, well, 1, 2004, 2007, that there is no way in the world the housing market could sustain the prices that they were at. You're seeing it now. Prices are now starting to fall. Why? Because of inflation? No, inflation makes things go up. I know, I know, I know. It makes a lot of sense, huh? Logic. You can't get through life without logic, ladies and gentlemen. If it doesn't make logic, it doesn't make sense. Been saying that since I was nine years old. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's show you the logic. I'm going to give you two movies. I'm going to talk about these two movies now. And I'm going to talk about these two movies at the end. One of them is known as the Margin Call. The Margin Call. The Margin Call. Kevin Spacey. There's been a lot of bad press about Kevin Spacey in the news lately. Don't know if it's true or not. Don't care. Kevin Spacey? Good actor. Is he good at everything else? I don't know. Because I only know him as an actor. I only know him when he pretends. So what he does in reality is not my concern. Because I like him when he pretends. I know you can take that and you can spin that however you want. Oh, he pretends a lot when he's doing... Okay, I gotcha. But I don't care about the media and the hype. What I can tell you about Kevin Spacey, uh, Cuba Gooding Jr., and so many other... Bill Cosby. <laughs> how dare he try to buy NBC? Um, ladies and gentlemen, how dare Michael Jackson try to buy the Beatles collection? What the... Yes. You'll, you'll notice that there's a correlation to their conduct outside the industry that embarrasses the industry as to how they come after them. Sorry, just the way it is. But if you take a look at the Margin Call 2011 movie, you will start to understand. Now, some people say, well, the movie just ended. Yes, it does just end because the movie is not for entertainment purposes. God, and people are not getting it. That is letting you know what's really going on in the scene, uh, in, the, um, in the reality. Look, if you take a look at that movie, what I can guarantee you is there is a conversation towards the end where he's speaking to the top guy of the company, and he tells him, it's all fake. None of it is real. Guess what he's talking about? He's talking about the money. The money? The money. There is no money. It's all fake. Everybody's out here. That's why they can give away millions of dollars because it, it's not real. So this is what I, I, I told um, the members over at SACCOM last evening. And I want to share that with you. I can share this with you because this part is not proprietary. A lot of people are not understanding the credits. That a person receives. So go back and look at IRS tax topic 453 and understand it. If somebody owes you a debt and you've documented it, that's what a Mayor Legion is for. And you've documented it, a Mayor Legion helps to provide a second and third party documenter, witnesses as to the debt and the attempt to collect the debt. And when these companies fail or refuse to respond, and you better believe they never respond, then guess what? Well, see, they're in a catch-22 because if they respond, they're admitting. If they don't respond, they're admitting. That's what I do. I'm sorry. Let me introduce myself to you. I've been doing this for a while. I've been watching the courts through all of their presumptions. How if you show up 
in court, you're guilty. Why? Because you just submitted to their jurisdiction. A young man came to me the other day and he said, you know, he knew these people and they did a motion for him because they were coming after him. Uh, this is uh, a non-criminal matter, but they were coming after him, trying to charge him penalties and nobody wants you to start another incident. Y'all better get on out of my way. All right, I'm deleting that. Uh-oh, we got a virus, so we're going to remove. Bye-bye. I don't know this company. It's got to go. Okay. I got to go. This got to go. I know where it came from. I installed a... Um... Oh, okay. I know where it came from. Okay, no problem. I don't mind the anti-ransomware thing, but I'm going to let it go because I don't need it. Uh... Ladies and gentlemen, let me get back to the conversation. In dealing with these Ponzi schemes, I was talking with SACOM and I was letting them know that the IRS tax topic 453, when they tell you that if somebody owes you a debt, you have to document it. Now, what you don't understand... If someone owes you a debt, are you may and they have not paid you may have a bad debt ladies and gentlemen you do have a bad debt if you read the rest of what they say well if you lent them something and you gave it to them as a gift then it's not a bad debt well if you gave somebody something as a gift you excuse me then it's not a debt you gave it to them lord have mercy that's how the article is written that's how backwards that article is Ladies and gentlemen, if you loan money to someone, if you gave somebody something, if they made a promise to pay you back, you don't actually have to lend money in order for it to be a bad debt. You can give them something of value, and they agree to give you something of value. That's a bad debt. And then you valuation. You valuate what you gave them. Oh, I gave such and such a car, and that car was worth $400,000. And they promised that they were going to pay me back by giving me blah 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 and they never gave it to me so that's four hundred thousand dollars in debt that person is to you and all you got to do is document it send them notification and after you send them notification guess what the united states government does they say hey we need you to offset that debt what we need you to offset that debt okay and so what do you do they have a program for it called the 1099c program cancellation of debt debt forgiveness i love forgiving the Lord says you must forgive. How many times? How many times must you forgive? 77 times it says. You keep forgiving till it hurts. The government. No, it actually doesn't hurt the government that you forgive debt. Ladies and gentlemen, let me see if I could uh, explain that again. It actually doesn't hurt the government when you forgive debt. It actually helps the economy when you forgive debt. That's what I do. I help people, help the government in getting debt extinguished. So let's get back to the conversation, shall we? Ladies and gentlemen, the Mayor Legion, they not only document the debt, but they also help in sending a notification of debt forgiveness. And then they process the paperwork for you. And they just charge one simple fee. There's nothing else after that. Now, some people are trying to mix what AmeriLegion is doing into all that other junk they're hearing on the internet. Ladies and gentlemen, this is nothing about no original creditor or anything like this. This is about the holder in due course. The one who's claiming that you owe money. That's all it is. Whomever is claiming, including the IRS. I just received a frivolous filing at least that's what I think it is because the IRS sent me to collections. They never sent me the original notice. What the? What, what, what the are you fools doing? Apparently, they're mad at me. It's $6,000. They, they're charging interest. $1,000 worth of interest. I don't know where they're getting that from. And I'm not going to call the company. You see, that's the IRS. They claim to be representing the United States. They're saying I'm indebted to them, not indebted to the United States. I'm sorry. I, I didn't recognize that. So I'm going to go ahead and offset that debt. 
Oh, I'm, uh, oh, you guys don't understand? Oh, well, no, 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 no. Let me explain it to you so you get it. Ladies and gentlemen, um, money creation. Go to YouTube, type in money creation. That's, so that's three videos that you're going to be doing. And look at money creation. Now, they, they call it theory, theoretical. It's not theoretical. I can prove it to you every step of the way. I can show you exactly how it's created. Remember, the money is issued to the banks in exchange or return for government obligations. Notes, drafts, bills of exchange, and so on and so forth. Well, ladies and gentlemen, let me show you how the money is issued to the bank. When you get, that's why it says in return. The money is issued to the bank in return. So when you give them a promissory note, each one of you have given promissory notes to some sort of bank or institution. Doesn't matter, you've done it. If you're above the age of 20, you've done it. Now what the bank does is they take that. Okay, and guess what? Because they are a financial institution under the Federal Reserve Act, the banks, when they receive that issue, they get to operate as the treasury or the controller of the currency. And they get to generate circulating notes. Circulating notes, that's right. No longer circulating notes issued in blank. Gotta go. It, it, see, this doesn't like this. So that it, it's saying, no, you don't want that. And okay, and I won't take it. Now, I, the guys at uh, J Downloader, I, I wasn't trying to click on this. I clicked on it by accident. But J Downloader, man, that lets me download all kind of playlists of videos on websites. Every website I can think about. They got a video playlist. I don't care if it's everything. I get to download it with J Downloader. Not advertising them, just telling you that that's a free software. <laughs> okay, getting back to reality. Oops, there goes gravity. All right, ladies and gentlemen, when you hand the bank a promissory note, the bank takes that promissory note and get this, this is the unique part about the promissory note. That's why they take your promissory notes and don't return them. Ladies and gentlemen, it's not about getting anything from the treasury. Guess what they get to do? They get to take that promissory note that you just gave them uh, give me one second. Yeah. All right. They get to take that promissory note that you just gave them. Yeah, we're going to, I'm going to delete this because uh, I don't need a trial version anyway. Um, so that takes care of, why are you running in my background? You got to, you got to stop running, you know, because that's the problem. Everybody wants to run for president, for, for a Congress member. Everybody wants to run. You know, from the police, you know, everybody wants to run. So, guess what? I don't want to run. Uh oh. There's an ongoing scan. I didn't tell you to do no scan. Shut down. I didn't ask you to do no scan. Nope. I don't want to purchase. I want to exit. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and explain it, and then I'm going to move on with this video. It will be informative. You will get it. Uh, there's a reason why I'm bringing up the margin call video. It's called The Margin Call. Just type in margin call and you'll see the video. I go to fmovies.taxi. There's a lot of pop-ups, so you have to have a pop-up blocker. If you're doing it on a handheld device, you need to go to I, 1DM. 1D as in David, M as in Mary, browser. Use 1DM browser and it'll block all those pop-ups. And then you can watch for free. And you can watch in the comfort of your own home. I'm now casting it to my uh, television. Yes. See? That's me casting from my cell phone to the television. The other movie I'll talk about in a second. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and finish explaining money to you. When you give your promissory note to the bank or a bill of exchange, doesn't matter, or draft, or a banker's acceptance or a trade acceptance, what the bank does, and you guys are going to learn something, I promise you, not just with this, but with some other things. What the bank does is they take that instrument that you just gave them and they deposit it. Go and look. The bank, as a financial institution, is a depository institution. They receive deposits. That's why I told you, SACOM is a depository institution. We receive deposits on a regular basis. They're called SAT packs. <laughs> the SAT pack program will be ending on the 31st. 
That's why everybody was talking about us getting over on them. We weren't getting over on nobody. Everybody was talking, well, get God into my account. We don't care about your account. I kept telling everybody, I ain't got time for getting over on you. We gave you your sap pack. Why? Because you were supposed to know what you could do with it. Ladies and gentlemen, you set up a trust account. Do you not know you can deposit that bond if you do it right? That's right. You get to deposit it if you do it right. But we're not going to do that research for you. We tried to tell you we were providing you what a ton more than you could ever imagine ever being provided. And because we didn't want to short sell the market, we didn't want to interfere with the market. We only created so many of those bonds. We didn't advertise publicly. There was no reason to. These are securities under the Securities Act, known as the National Bankruptcy Act of 1933. The Emergency Economic Banking Relief Act. Okay, but it's not our job to explain all of that to you. That's not our job. And if you're trying to figure it out and you're trying to copy what SATCOM is doing, I promise you, if you didn't know what you were doing at first and didn't understand this at first, you missed a lot of steps. So you got some cleanup to do. Sorry. Like we said, many people were trying to duplicate what we were doing and didn't understand what we were doing. They really didn't understand. Oh, you're trying to get people out of jail. Ain't nobody trying to get nobody free or get people out of jail. We were creating securities. Lord have mercy. We told people that from the beginning. It's called Securities Acquisition Trust Commission. We were helping to acquire securities and helping people gain control of the securities held in their minor account. That's what we were doing. But nobody was paying attention. My bad. So ladies and gentlemen, when you deposit that into the bank, because it's a depository institution, by law, because they, the type of depository institution they are, not the type of depository institution we are, they are a different depository institution. They get to do what's known as fractional reserve banking. That's right. They get to hypothecate. So they get to take that and look, quite literally, they get to, in some cases, multiply it by 90% what you've deposited into the account. What the? F Whoa, that's a whole lot of hypothecation. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the game. That's why the banks are all so happy to have you send them a promissory note and not return it to you. Y'all remember all those promissory notes y'all sent to the bank and they returned everything but the promissory note? Why do you think they did that? Because they deposited it, not with the treasury. The banks get to deposit it into an account. They open up an account in your name. Yes, what you've been hearing is correct. They open up an account in your name or probably in the name of the item that is introduced. They may add another letter, another number or something but they open that account, and once they open that account, they get to create money. Now that money is in circulation. That promissory note's been deposited. Wait, hold on. What can y'all do to stop this? Well, you can start understanding what you're doing. Keep copies of your promissory notes you send to the bank, and if the bank don't credit your account, if they don't give you access to the account where they're creating the money, because that's supposed to be a loan. Even when you do your promissory note for your home, they're supposed to give you the money. Given the other homeowner credit, that's not the that's not the deal. Because remember, they already received the money from the treasury, so the other homeowner was supposed to get paid anyway. But because they took your promissory note, pay attention. Remember, they take the promissory note, give it to the treasury, the treasury pays them. But because they also took that promissory note and deposited it, they created money. Ladies and gentlemen, the money they create is debt. What, you didn't know? Now the hypothecation or the fractional reserve is not your debt. It's still public debt, but it's not your debt. That's what the treasury allows. Now they didn't originally let them go to 33%. They didn't originally let them go to 90%. Okay, the percentage was very well set, called the Glass-Steagall Act. That's what's the reason for it. Because they didn't want the banks running amok like they did after they killed the Glass-Steagall Act. That was Bush. That, that's, that's his legacy, but nobody wants to talk about that. Remember, the bumbling so-called president, 
Now they're trying to clean his image up so when he dies, he looks like he was somebody. When he was nobody, he was just a stooge like the one that's in the office now. This is what they do. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's the biggest Ponzi scheme in the existence of mankind. See, everybody was thinking that junk was money. I told you, I've understood from day one that it was never money. I had somebody there, my father, who explained that to me. Now, he did explain it to my brothers and sisters. It doesn't appear that they got it, though. And I'm, I'm kind of surprised by that because those are my brothers and sisters. And, you know, they, I assume, were intelligent creatures. My bad. Okay, my real bad. Ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> gotta clear my throat. Let me clear my anyway. Ladies and gentlemen, the biggest Ponzi scheme. If you don't believe me, Margin Call is one movie, and the next one is The Big Short. As a matter of fact, ladies and gentlemen, I'm playing The Big Short because I heard of The Big Short when it came out. But you know what I did not do? I did not watch it when it came out. Okay. Sorry, i am uh, got this electric desk, and it's now doing what it wants to do, and I need to lower it. Okay, get going down. It was going too high, and I need it lower so I can lean on the desk. Um, I am I'm trying to see how many minutes I'm into this uh, movie. 22 minutes and 7 seconds, and I had to stop it. 22 minutes and 7 seconds. This is a two hour and 10 minute, 15 second movie. Let me explain to you because I don't think any of you get it. I wouldn't be mentioning it to you if it was not worthwhile. Some of you are not gonna get this movie. You're gonna think that it's too boring, too technical, and you're not understanding. I'm not asking you to watch it for entertainment. I'm asking you to watch it for understanding. You see, it's going to talk about those kooks who understood what was going on in 2008 before 2008 happened. Those kooks, those crazy people, those people doing videos and talking about this stuff. Um, how nobody listened to them. Ladies and gentlemen, I was one of those people. I even tried to tell my brother. I said, hey, 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 you need to pull out of that market. I said, the market can't sustain these highs. But he wouldn't listen. He had 13 properties. They're all gone. But he's not the only one. Look at all the other people who lost their property because they wouldn't listen to people like me. It was impossible, ladies and gentlemen. We, I, I told you, I helped someone with a property that was worth 179000 That's what they claim it was worth. And we sold it for 531000 Yeah, I did some renovations. We spent $100,000 on renovations. But, okay, fine. So that's $279,000, and he sold it for $351,000. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me. <laughs> I apologize. $351,000 was the profit. He sold it for $550,000. So the cash profit after everybody got paid, $300,000. $51,000. Impossible. And I knew it then. I participated in that. I knew it. Wasn't hurt nobody. Guess what? Because this was just the bank. He was dealing bank to bank. But he got greedy. I kept trying to tell him it, it's not money, but he got greedy. Gave me $3,400 for helping him make over $500,000. He had several properties and I helped him with it. And each property he made a profit off of exactly what I promised him. I told him if I make this property worth $200,000 more than it is worth today, all you have to do is pay me $50,000 and we're finished. I'm done. That means he would make $150,000 profit. Who wouldn't take such a deal? Well, he said, okay, he agreed. We shook hands. We were friends. At least so I thought. I'd known this person for years since I was 15 and he was 14. And next thing you know, he had dealt with so-called money before. 
He played basketball overseas. He was making hundreds of thousand dollars a year. He was used to money. But this is the end of his career. Hey, I told y'all the story. This was my friend. I told him, I said, hey, since this is the end of your career, you don't have any accolades. If you give me three weeks of your time, I will train you. And I guarantee you that I can improve your shooting percentage by 30%. He was shooting 52% at the line. Him and Shaq could have been best friends. One day and shooting free throws. I wish we had videotaped it. He shot 96 out of 100. Another day, he shot 94 out of 100. His average was 86 free throws out of 100. And he was required to shoot 100 free throws a day. Three times a week. I want y'all to understand, for three weeks. And he averaged 86. Not only when he went back to play for that season... Did he get MVP of the season? His team, for the first time in his life, made it to the playoffs. They won the championship. He got the MVP for the championship. Not even a thank you. Because in his mind, he did it all by himself. Again, no problem, because all I did was guaranteed that I would do what I did. So I guaranteed him that I would make his property worth something. Here's the problem. I didn't go to him and say, man, I guarantee you. He came to me and saying, I don't have anybody else I can trust. I'm overseas and these properties have some value and I need somebody I can trust and you're the only person I can trust. I said, okay, I'll tell you what. If you provide me a place to stay, because that means I would have had to take care of his property and then take care of my stuff at the same time and I'm no nah, we ain't doing it you provide one of the apartments in the property and I'll take care of it and then I will go ahead and manage it for you and so forth ladies and gentlemen I want you to pay attention that's exactly what I did and then it was if I make this property worth blah 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 that's when I gave him the offer because I knew what I was capable of because of me, and I will say that, well, Jehovah, of course. I got to give my best friend, Jehovah, the credit. But because of him allowing me to assist this young man, everybody in that neighborhood started changing their properties and remodeling and redoing the landscape to follow what I did because they saw the profit he made. Oops. All right, ladies and gentlemen, but it's not money. None of it was. All I did was increased value. Say what? Value. You guys don't get it? Everything is valuation. It has nothing to do with money. That's why they call it market value. You guys are paying market value. Do you understand when you're paying taxes, you're paying market value? You're not paying the actual value of the currency. The currency is not worth anything. The currency is worth less and less as every day goes by. Okay, so let's talk so that you guys get it, get it, get it. Because the banks create these accounts, you don't need to worry about proving they create the account. As I say, unlike many of you, I can prove it. And we're going to do that at SACCOM for people. We're not going to be arguing the dumb stuff. See, the only thing about it is the people who are going to be coming to SACCOM in the future, we're going to help them with their mortgages. We're going to focus just on mortgages at SACCOM. Why? Well, because mortgages are securities. Not because they're backed and placed on the market. No, they're securities because they're property. They're an asset. An asset is a security. Ha <laughs> ha! Did you know that? An asset is a security. And that's all we're doing. We're protecting your assets. We're going to do the work for you. We're going to tell you what we're going to do. And there are going to be some people out there who are going to try to duplicate what we're doing. And that's okay. They're going to end up running into a lot of problems because they think they know something. 
They think that they're smarter. Well, ladies and gentlemen, if they were smarter and they knew something, then why are they copying what we're doing? No, 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 pay attention. If they were smarter and if they knew something and if they knew more about it than I did, then why are they copying me? Shouldn't I be copying them? Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not copying a single person, not a single organization. Do you see us copying what they did? Okay, because it doesn't work like that. I don't need to copy nobody. They need to copy me. Why? Because, I, you know what? I was a genius. Because Jehovah allows me to be. Who wouldn't want to follow the leader? Rakim will say peace. Okay. Oh, uh, some of y'all won't get that. Uh, there's a, a young man. His name is R to the A to the K I M. And he used to be with Eric B. And he talked about checking out his melody and running for president. Well, Eric B. running for president. And he also talked about being a fiend of the mic. So the people who understand that understand why I say the things I say when, you know, I say them. All right. Let's get back to the other movie, okay? The other movie is The Big Short. As I said, I have only watched 22 minutes of this 2 hour and 10 minute movie. And while my computer is going to be doing things in the background, I've been up since 3 o'clock. It is now 6 o'clock. I'm going to finish watching this movie. And the reason why is because they've already, in these 22 minutes, they've already said more than enough. If you really pay attention to this movie, based on a true story, both of the two films that I'm talking about is based on a true story. You just have to pay attention. This one is about Solomon Brothers and Neiman Brothers. Okay, I said Solomon Brothers. Solomon and Solomon. And Neiman Brothers let you know exactly how they operate now I'm not asking you guys to get in the stock the big short I'm not asking you guys to shorten the stock what I'm trying to get you to understand is all of it is based upon especially the margin call that was based upon an algorithm that they still try to use to this day an algorithm that never worked never could have worked you can't create such an algorithm. Well, technically, let's do this. They created the same algorithm that it's called the economy. That is an algorithm. You guys need to understand. They have certain rules in place. That's why they're tweaking it all the time. That's why you see them uh, amending this or creating this statute and that statute and coming up with this policy and that policy. They're tweaking it all the time. The only problem is you can't tweak what doesn't work. And they know it doesn't work. Okie dokie. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Now we're going to move on to the next point. So that you guys get it. Amerilegion is then providing the people proof of their attempt to collect the debt on their behalf. And then they're forgiving the debt. Amerilegion is going to be contacting people because they're going to need to get their social security number. The reason why they're going to need to get the social security number is so that they can do the filing of the forms so that we can have documentation of the credit then you'll have to contact your tax agent and you'll have to fill out a 1099 not 1099 uh, schedule C that's where you'll document the credits any amount of money you owe any government agency will automatically be offset by that ladies and gentlemen I'm gonna tell this to some of you some of you will get it some of you won't get it with your credits, they're not tax credits, they're actual credits. With your credits, you can use these to back your bills of exchange. You can create bonds and you can back them with your credit. Shh, don't tell nobody. Yes, I know nobody else is telling you this. But everybody wanted to try to say that Redress and Eon was trying to get over on them. What the flying because they didn't trust anyone because they didn't understand they assumed we even had one guy report us to the attorney general because he said we were defrauding him really we had a bunch of people say well you guys promised this he we didn't promise nothing everything we guaranteed we were going to do for people we have done and now we're sending out the tax credits 
which you didn't earn, which you didn't pay for. But we're sending those out to everyone. They are my credits that I've documented. And I apologize that I wanted to wait an extra amount of time. Oh, you guys don't. Oh, okay. Let me explain. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, when you have a debt against someone, they have a certain amount of time for which to contest the debt. I allowed more than two years to go by so that it is unequivocal to the understanding that those individual organizations don't have a right to contest because they were given notification they've had two years and they didn't say a word. I'll even tell you something else, ladies and gentlemen. If you look at our website, our email contains a disclaimer. That disclaimer tells people, hey, they can read it at the website. Our website has a disclaimer. All of our websites have a disclaimer. Why? Because that's the agreement. That's the contract. Now, look, our contract isn't like everybody else's contracts. Our contracts don't bind anybody to anything. They say, if you fair, we fair. Go on about your business. But if you act up, if you act a fool, y'all know what I mean by acting a fool. Ludicrous! Anyway, if you act a fool, then we're going to sit up there and correct that acting career. And it says, oh, by the way, if you think that you're going to, you know, send us an agreement and all that stuff doesn't work that way. You see, unlike all these other companies, we put a clause in there that nobody else has. Our clause simply says, hey, if you received this before, then don't worry about it. It's just a reminder. Oh, and by the way, we uh, will not accept any other offers. No amendment of this agreement may be done by this party or any other party. Just that simple. See, we don't want people trying to futuristically change the terms of our agreement. So we block the changing of the terms of the agreement permanently. Oh, this is an actual irrevocable contract. See, you guys have been signing these contracts where you've been agreeing. And they've been claiming that the contract is irrevocable. Or irrevocable especially with your mortgages and they change the terms of the contract all the time well they we do an assignment because we we put that there's a clause in there that you put the, you know because we we wrote it but you you signed it as if you wrote it well you put that clause in there that says that we can uh, do this and do, okay fine go ahead and uh, do your assignments however the terms of the agreement says that you're supposed to apply for the mortgage insurance and they're not doing that ladies and gentlemen so sue the insurance company you will subpoena the bank and get the insurance company and file a claim. Ladies and gentlemen, we at SACOM are getting ready to go after, and I want you to understand this, so you guys need to understand this. We're going after corporations from this point on. We're tired of these corporations thinking that it's okay to do whatever they want. But we're going to go after their bottom line at SACOM. That's where we're headed. But for right now, I'm going to finish explaining the Merrill Legion. Once the Merrill Legion completes its process, it notifies the credit bureaus that this debt does not exist. And here's proof. And they give them the copy of the forgiveness letter and uh, forgiving the debt. There you go. And our hope is to, I don't have the time to do it now, but our hope is to eventually boost the person's credit rating. However, now that you have that, now you can go into court. Because you have evidence that the debt has been offset. And remember, they haven't challenged it. And they can't challenge it in court. Why? Because we can bring witnesses in that they were given proper notice. And they didn't challenge it then. They didn't object to it. Now, it doesn't mean they, that they acquiesce. What it means is that they had an opportunity to challenge it and they chose not to. And we relied upon their choosing not to. And it can't be to our detriment. Alright, so ladies and gentlemen, when you finish watching the short, when you finish watching money creation videos, and when you finish watching margin call, then you will start to understand finances. All of you will, well this is your research people, pay attention, I just explained it to someone yesterday because people don't understand how to do research. I want you to pay attention because this is the most important thing I would have said during this whole video. Ladies and gentlemen, it's called re Search. That means you've already searched and now you're doing it again. Research doesn't end with you watching some stupid person's video and then taking what they say and running with it. Lord have mercy. 
That's not research. Research is going to the source. Ladies and gentlemen, the source of anything is its foundation. Pay attention. Pay attention because you haven't heard anything more profound. The source of anything is its foundation. None of you goes to the foundation. Look, I've shown you how that March 9, 1933 Act, Presidential Proclamation 2039, and the amendment to the Federal Reserve Act is the New Deal. It hasn't been repealed, ladies and gentlemen. That's the contract. Stick to the contract. Everybody wants to bring in all that other stuff. Stick to the contract. Everybody wants to bring in all this other blah, blah, blah. Stick to that contract. And you'll be okay. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, this is a 40-minute video, 41 minute now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this to a close because I, I could go on and on and on and talk about more things. But I wanted to talk to you about the finance issues. Why? Because so many people are misunderstanding finances. They're misunderstanding what's going on with the bank. They're misunderstanding what's happening with them. But ladies and gentlemen, if you were to take your credits and you were to apply them the right way, you could start being tax-free immediately. Why? Because you write it off on your taxes and you get it back on your taxes. That makes you tax-exempt. That makes it to where you can get a refund. It's not our job to show you how to do this. This is me letting you know that you need to do the research. Research from the foundation. All right. Y'all take care. I'm going to go back to watching the short. And well, we have margin call, and this is uh oh, that's a shame because you know what? I just forgot, and I've been saying the name, and I just forgot the name of this movie. Oh, the big short. So, whoo, all right. So, that's what I would suggest you watch, ladies and gentlemen. The big short margin call, and I would suggest you watch margin call first and then watch the big short. It's kind of out of order, but I promise you, you'll understand it better. Even if you think you understand, you don't understand. All right. Uh, you know, there is one other thing. I'm getting ready to start one other little venture, uh, and I'll let you guys know about that in the future. It's not going to be anything big. It's not going to be any huge corporation. See, ladies and gentlemen, if you don't understand, that's what I do. I start corporations and I give them to other people. I don't run them myself. There's no reason for me to run them. I just make sure that they understand the business concept, the idea of running it, and how they will never be in it for a profit, never be in it to take advantage of anyone. Okay, I just showed them how Uber has never made a profit. Uber has been in business for over 15 years and they never made a profit. Say so what? And they just... Uh, received two hundred million dollars when they were trying to fight that stupid proposition so you guys understand there are a lot of companies out there that are in business that bring rake in a whole lot of money but they don't make a profit all the money they rake in it goes towards this or that it is a profit technically but it's not a profit legally will never make a profit that's always been a rule. I don't care what anybody else says or how they say it. Most of our organizations are nonprofit organizations, and if they're set up and they're not a nonprofit organization, they're still a nonprofit organization. Ladies and gentlemen, you cannot make a profit in this economy. Impossible. It's just impossible. Impossible. It's just impossible. That is uh, new birth. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for taking the time. I wish that y'all have a Coke and a smile, and I will see y'all somebody else's while. Adios. Uh-oh, get out of the way.